Hello everyone. In this video, we'll see how we can convert a typical SQL query into a PySpark data frame code. So I've received many uh, queries from the blog readers that I am already very well versed with SQL queries, but I'm new to Spark. So how difficult it is for me to learn Spark or work in Spark projects, right? And my answer is also pretty straightforward. If you already know this SQL, it should not be a big challenge for you to move to Spark. And the primary reason is that Spark comes with the SQL API. So whatever the SQL query you, you are used to run in traditional databases, right? Uh, most of the queries may run as is on Spark without much modifications. Uh, few queries may require some modifications because whatever the maybe the functions you are using or maybe the uh, some ANSI SQL extension you are using in the SQL query that is yet to be supported in SQL API. So that may require some manual uh, query modifications <clears throat> and some queries are not at all uh, supported as of now like most of the DML queries update deletes you cannot directly run on spark as such uh, although there are some distribution spark distribution like delta and then there is hoodie now which is getting very popular which allows you to run dml uh, operations right so th there are some but we'll not get into that my point here is uh, like recursive queries is there right so there are some type of queries which are not yet supported in PySpark, and there is no straightforward option also for that and you may have to handle it programmatically right now coming to that uh, most of the uh, options right you can handle it with the spark sql api now but in some cases you may want to switch to the data frames like maybe because some of the inbuilt functions available in scala spark or maybe pi spark are supported only by rdds right and you cannot directly run it using spark sql so in that case you may want to switch to data frame or it could be that the existing uh, existing code is already developed in PySpark and in the data frames and you just want to enhance it or the improve the functionality of the existing code so like all that is perfectly fine but you just want the continuity to be in the data frame so you want to add some improvement or enhancement or modifications to the existing code so you may want to do it in the data frame itself right so as part of this video right i want to cover that if you have a typical sql query what should be your strategy to convert it into a PySpark data frame code right so it's like uh, in my previous post right i'll share that link in the description i shared that okay if your sql query is this this is the equivalent pi spark code for it right so it's like a to a prime mapping that okay if if input sql query looks like this where you have filters how you will apply filters on pi spark data frame if you have some sorting done on the sql query how you can do sorting in the pi spark right it was more of ad hoc basis but then I thought that why not come up with a systematic step by step approach that okay for any given SQL query what approach a definite approach which, which you can follow and that should be pretty general so that it applies to all your queries conversion right. So as part of this video we will see an example where we have uh, multiple SQL constructs in a query. I won't say that it's a very complex query but it does involve most of the SQL constructs like filter and then group by and doing some aggregation doing some sorting limiting the records to the user so we'll take a typical SQL query and then we'll break it into multiple steps and then we'll see what is the equivalent data frame for it and at the end we'll run it and we'll see what exactly is the output we are getting right so let's start right so for this example right i'll be using amazon open data set uh, which is available on s3 i'm just reading a single file part because i don't want to load uh, much data into the data frame that may take some time right in execution so what i am suggesting is you can also use it and let me create a data frame out of it right so here i'm creating a data frame i'm just reading a single file part from the s3 bucket and um, once this data frame uh, is created i would like to check the count of it that how many records i have right now in my data frame so you can see i have some good number of records i may also want to check the schema of it so yeah you can see that it has some good number of columns most of the columns i'm seeing as string but there are few integers and a date column as well right so i think uh, we'll be sticking to this data set for our example now the another thing I want to do right now is for this data frame, right? I want to create a table, 
right a temporary view you can say uh, and i'll be using this uh, to run my sql queries on top of it so i've used create or replace temp view and i've given the name as table underscore books so now i have a temporary view named table books and i have a data frame df underscore books both uh, basically pointing to the same data right so now what i'll do is i'll i've created a query here and i'll just run this query and i'll see the what exactly is the output of this query right so yep so i'm, I'm running this query and uh, this query if you see here right this query has uh, many constructs in it and we'll see if i'll scroll down i'll i'll i can show you that okay so the query got executed i have displayed 10 records and i have applied some uh, filter conditions and some aggregations and done some group by and this is the output of it right this is my output of the sql query so uh, yeah here you can see right that what exactly is the sql query so my sql query has a select statement obviously which where i'm fetching some column product id and then there are three aggregate columns where i'm doing count max and min of star ratings right and then i've used alias to give a more user friendly name to these aggregated columns and then i'm reading it from the table underscore books which is nothing but the temporary view which i have created just now from my data frame then i have applied some filter conditions so you can see that okay this column should be y and date between this and this and markup place and this 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 so i have three columns on which i have applied some filter conditions then i am doing it on uh, doing a group by on the product id and this is also part of the select statement right so i am doing a grouping on product id and then doing some ag aggregation on the star rating column and after group by i'm doing an order by clause i'm sorting the data on the basis of total rating which is a derived column and that too on the descending order and then i'm limiting the record to 10 records only so whatever i'll get in the output i'll have 10 records only right so before we start right the very first step is you should understand that okay what exactly is the sql execution order right so if you don't know that then it may create some problem for you right that uh, if say if rather than processing where like which is a filter condition at start if you process it somewhere here sometimes you may get not accurate results right so it is very uh, very uh, like it is pretty good to have knowledge that what is the execution order in a typical sql and we'll follow the same sequence right while converting it into a data frame code as well right so the very first uh, step is to run a from so whatever are the base tables involved in your sql query you will identify those tables right and uh, in our case uh, this from typically responds like in a sql query response to the table corresponds to the table for us it will be a data frames right and then where which is like after from the where executes which basically applies the filter records on all the base tables then we have the group by we do all the aggregations on it then we have then we have the having having clause basically applies filter on group by data right so where applies on the base tables having applies on the group by data now after that we run the select statement so we fetch all the required columns for the user as per the given query and then we run the sorting by using order by clause and finally we apply the limit or the top or any any <coughs> any clause which applies some restrictions on the output records so once this is done right so now we understand okay that any sql query given to any sql engine will follow these steps right so first this step will run then this then this then this like this it will run now we have to replicate same order on the data frame side as well right so once you understand the execution order for any sql query we'll see here that okay we'll analyze the input query and we can see that we have select we have from we have where we have group by we have order by and we have limit right so from above we can map right what is the first step first step is from so okay so from this this should be my very first step in my data frame code then what then where where is okay so after this i know that okay i have to execute this code similarly whatever the sequence i'm seeing here group by select order by limit in that order only i have to perform my data frame transformations right <laughs> so like i said right the very first thing is the from so we know that okay table underscore books was the table name equivalent to is df underscore books data frame underscore books is our data frame right so for this there is just one base table equivalent to it is df underscore books the next step is where condition so in where i see that there are there are where conditions applied on three different columns in the original query 
so there there can be multiple ways you can apply this filter right you can apply a filter three times one for each column you can apply it in different manners also but the easiest way is you just have to copy the entire filter condition as is and put it in the, in a filter function that's it right so you see here that i have copied all this and put it into uh, like between double quotes i put it into a filter function that's it i have not used anything else this is the most easiest way if you're coming from sql to data frame this is the most easiest way you can convert your sql query where condition into a filter uh, function in data frames right the next step is the group by so group by we are doing it on the product id along with that we are doing some aggregation on star rating column we are calculating count max and min so the next step we'll do in the data frame is we'll apply the group by right and we'll apply aggregates on star rating columns by applying count max and min function it so equivalent to this right in the data frame it is dot group by product id this somewhat looks similar to what we have on the sql side right group by and mind it that this is pretty case sensitive so like b should be in caps and rest all the alphabet should be in lower case to so make sure that you are following the cases properly and group by product id and then you can aggregate it so to do that what you have to do is you have to use agg aggregate function and inside that you can pass that okay i'm doing count of column star rating i'm doing max of column star rating and i'm doing min of column star rating right so this query does not have any any having step so we can skip it the next in the order of execution is select right so what we are doing is in the select we'll fetch all the requir required columns also we'll do any tr trans column level transformations like applying the aliases or if there are any window functions you use anything uh, that will come into the select uh, clause right select step so there are two ways in which you can use the aliasing you can either use with column renamed right and here you can see with column renamed what count star rating whatever is the derived column name i'm converting into total rating best rating and worst rating as per my sql query right so in my sql query you can see i have mentioned it as count as total max as best min as worst right so similarly i'm doing here uh, and then obviously i'll select all the four columns in the output which is required product id total rating best rating and worst rating right uh, similarly instead of with column renamed if you are not comfortable with it right you are just switching from sql to data frames right if you and you are not feeling very comfortable with this you may want to use dot alias and then you can give alias name here itself right so you can see that this looks more like an sql query where you are doing count of some column and dot alias and then the new name which corresponds to like count of column name as your your new name right so if you are not comfortable with with column renamed you can also use dot alias does not make much difference right and then obviously you will select all the columns required in the output after that the order by execution step comes so for this what you have to do is you can either use sort or you can use order by i'm using order by here because it corresponds more to the sql order by thing so please make sure that this is case sensitive so b should be in caps rest all the alphabet should be in lower case so i just have to do order by and then whatever is the column name and by default it is ascending so in my case i wanted it in a descending order so i'm giving ascending equal to false right and the last execution step is to limit the record so i limit is available in pyspark data frames so will you do use limit 10 here right so you see here right that what we have done typically here is we have divided this single sql query into multiple constructs select from where group by order by and limit right and then depending on the execution order we have picked one sql construct we have converted it into corresponding data frame code and then we have moved to the next step once we have gone through all the steps and we have the equivalent PySpark code for it, we'll just put everything into a single piece and then we'll run it, right? So here you see, I'm importing the SQL functions like I'm using max, min, count. Also, I'm using call function here, right? Uh, to call the column names in the data frame. So for that, I've just done the import star. You can also do specific uh, function import rather than doing an import star right and this when once i put everything whatever we have done in the execution order right in the same manner i've just appended all the transformations into a single data frame here right so let me just copy it and run it for you so that uh, we can check the output as well so i'm just importing the libraries first and then i'll just copy this code here and I'll let it run. 
so right so what we are doing we are applying the df underscore books which is corresponding to the base tables then we are doing a filter on it the easiest method is just to copy the filter condition as is put it between the double quotes and that's it then we have applied the group by and done the aggregation on the columns we have then used alias names for the column name then we have applied the select function we have selected all the columns which are required we have done the ordering in the descending manner that's why ascending equal to false by default it is true then we have limited the order to 10 records only and then we have applied dot show just to show the output on my console right so you see here right the my query is executed and i'm getting the same result here as per my sql query so now you know right that for any given sql query if you have to convert it into a typical PySpark or the spark data frame code right what should be your approach right and this i think is a pretty general approach which you can follow to convert any given sql query into a data frame hope this helps thank you for watching this video guys thanks